In this problem, we're given a sequence uh, which has the properties such that uh, if we go far enough out in the sequence, all the terms are uh, greater than or equal to 3, but less than or equal to 7. Uh, the first question that we're asked is, well, does this sequence necessarily converge to some number between 3 and 7? And the answer is no, just because we don't know whether or not this sequence converges at all. It could be, you could have if, if 3 here and 7 or here, we could have you know, terms just oscillating between 3 and 7 somehow, and maybe not converging to any specific number. Um, so an example of that would be, say, if we let a n equal sine of n, um, that would be close because that oscillates between negative 1 and 1, but we want between 3 and 7. So say if we just add 4, then we have a n is always less than or equal to 1 plus 4, so 5, and so it's greater than or equal to um, negative 1 plus 4, or 3. But this doesn't converge to any number because sine doesn't converge as n goes to infinity. So the answer to part A is no, with um, counterexample uh, being sine of n plus 4. All right, so now we consider the case that, well, what if a n does converge to some number? Uh, does that number have to be contained in the interval, uh, into the closed interval 3 to 7? Uh, well, it seems that it should, and um, in fact it does, but of course we need to prove that. So let's say we have the interval 3 to 7 here, and let's suppose that L is less than 3. So somewhere over here we have, um, have our uh, limit L, and we also, of course, have the an converges to L. So if you go back to the definition of what it mean, means for a sequence to converge to a certain limit, this means that if we're given any epsilon greater than 0, um, then there exists some n, some capital N. So in other words, there is some point in the sequence where if we go out far enough, uh, so if we go out far enough, then we're within epsilon of our limit. And we can make epsilon any number, we, or as small as we like, as long as it's you know, greater than zero. Um, such that a sub capital N minus L is less than epsilon. So what this means in terms of our problem is that let's let what if uh, is that we can let epsilon be so small that um, you know the interval L minus epsilon L plus epsilon um, does not intersect the interval three to seven. In other words, they have no, no common points. And of course, one such number that we could choose is, let's see, let epsilon equal, let's just take the number halfway between um, 3 and L. So let's take 3 minus L over 2. So now, if we um, Uh, take every term in the sequence past um, the index capital N. So, so for every a sub n, such that n is greater than or equal to capital N, uh, then uh, we get a contradiction. We have, on one hand, it has to be within epsilon of L. So that means it has to be somewhere in this interval. So a sub n is contained in the interval L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon. But on the other hand, we're working under the assumption that all the terms in our sequence are greater than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to 7. 
So you can say that this contradicts uh, the assumption that A is in the interval 3 to 7. So that says that, well, L has to be greater than or equal to 3, since the assumption that L is less than 3 led to a contradiction. But what about uh, 7? Still, of course, possible that L is greater than 7. So this case is very similar to uh, the case when L is less than 3. So I'll just go over it uh, very briefly. So now suppose we took you know, an uh, interval of length epsilon equals, let's, since L is greater than 7, let's again take the midpoint. So L minus, instead of 3 minus L, now we're looking at L minus 7 over 2. And then the rest of the proof works exactly the same way. You know, there's, if we go out far enough in our sequence, all of our terms have to be contained in this interval. But this interval has this interval, you know, L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon, has no points in common with the interval 3 to 7, which contradicts the assumption that our points have to be contained in that, or our terms in the sequence have to be contained in that interval. So since L can't be less than 3 and L can't be greater than 7, we have to conclude that, in fact, L is contained in the interval 3 to 7. All right, so now we have uh, the third question. It says, if A sub n is monotonic, rest, well, is it necessarily true that it converges and that, that, number, that the limit is in the interval 3 to 7? So here we, can, we don't assume that um, A n converges. We actually prove that. And we can use uh, corollary in this, in this section. It says that if a and n, or a sub n and b sub n, are two monotonic sequences such that uh, such that a sub n is less than b sub n. less than or equal to b sub n. Then, well, if b sub n converges, then um, so does a sub n. And so if we take a sub n to be you know, our sequence that we're given, and if we let b sub n equal, well, let's say 7, then, of course, the limit is b sub n limit of b sub n as n goes to infinity is just equal to 7. And of course, we also have the condition. We also know that a n is less than or equal to 7, um, just by our assumption. So the rest of this theorem says that if we have two sequences like this, um, right, then a n converges. Right, so this says that um, a n converges, and we know that from our previous part that if a n does converge, then it has to be between 3 and 7. So by corollary and part b, a n converges to L with uh, L greater than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to 7. All right, so now we, um, right. So now we know that, um, well, we have a sequence that, um, if we have a sequence that's trapped between Know, two real numbers, then it's not necessarily true that it converges at all. But if it does converge, it has to be in that interval. And if it's monotonic, 
and contained in that interval, then it definitely has to converge. And then, of course, if it converges, then it must, uh, must converge to a limit in that interval.